Hi, you're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media and listening to us on Anchor FM and, and Spotify. Anywhere anywhere you download a podcast, I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman is... Matt Metris in Rochester, New York. And Matt and I have been dissecting and talking about Puerto Bello Tequila. Now, this is the Alamejo. If you've been sticking with us, we have talked about the Blanco and the Reposado. Both have been nominated for Brand of Promise nominees, as well as for its packaging. As you can see, it's it's quite quite elegant. Quite it's it's quite fancy. Elegant. Yeah, it's very fancy. Yeah. yeah. Now, off camera. By the way, before we taste this añejo, um, if you're listening to us on Spotify or anywhere you download uh, uh, podcasts, or if you're watching us on on uh, uh, on YouTube, please hit that red button, subscribe. All wonderful things will happen to you. Matt might even make you a cocktail. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. In exchange for $9. For $9. Yes, yeah, <laughs> right. It's a $9 cocktail, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> is that what you're pricing this at? Oh, my God. $9, $9. $9. Okay. Um, this Puerto Bello, look at how pretty this is. They, they, they've they got their branding all nice. And by the way, you can follow them on Instagram. They're they're very active on, on social media, especially their Instagram. Um, this is a uh, synthetic cork. Um, nice nice solid wood on the top. Though. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they've spent a little money on the... You know, they they seem to be well-funded. That's why I'm, I'm a little surprised that they're not more available in other states. Yeah. Um, anyway, what we know about the distillery, and, and I am finally off camera. I'm so glad that I, that, that we, we put this together. This is coming out of Nome. Uh, wow, let me put that over here. 1443. 1443, which is Grupo Industrial Tequilero de los Altos de Jalisco. Now, this distillery, I knew the name was familiar to me. And, and that was because when I read their brochure, they are, they are fermenting using the Mozart method. It makes sense to me now that I know that, uh, according to Matt and, and what he saw on the Nome list, Dulce Vida is, is also produced there, and so is Don Pilar. Tequila Don Pilar, he's an agave grower, so the only, the only agave that goes into his tequila is his own agave. However, this distillery is a co-op. It's owned by farmers. And so it makes sense that, you know, depending on, on um, who the brand owner is or who the farmer is or, or which, uh, you know, which field the, the agave is coming from um, is going to be different. I, I'm glad that they're using the Mozart method. I'm glad that distillery has not changed that method at all. I understand. I have seen pictures of the distillery. It is. There are pictures also in the in the brochure. Uh, it's clean. It's a beautiful little facility. Um, as far as I know, that they, they, they probably have um, improved on, on a lot of things. Uh, a lot of the machinery there. Uh, according to the brochure, the Puerto Bello brochure. Uh, the Añejo is uh, uh, aged for one and a half, one year and one and a half years. Uh, and according, if, if, if we're looking at this correctly, um, they are using white American oak barrels. Now, tell me I'm not crazy. Tell me that this is extremely darker than this one is. Yeah, it, it is. Um, and it, I don't know how easy it is to see on the camera because they look kind of similar on the camera, but yeah, with I, a nice, nice white background, you can see. Uh, yeah, you see how dark that yeah. is, and you know my lighting here. It's 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 nighttime already here in in Texas and also in in New York. So, um, but and and I'm not even sure the bottle. I'm not sure if the bottle is tinted at all. It doesn't seem mm. to be. It doesn't seem to be. If we get up near the top. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to be. But uh, anyway, um, it looks a lot richer than um, you know than the Reposado does. So I'm going to use my Glencairn for for this pour. I have a Stossel Harito, the wider mouth, shorter one. Okay. 
Now the color is a much a much deeper, richer amber. Wow, what was that look on your face? <laughs> that, that was pretty. Uh, I know, right? I, I snuck ahead a little bit, and I got got some aroma. And it's very uh, caramely, vanilla y Very impressive aroma. I know we're jumping ahead. Um, no, that's okay. Good legs. Right. Good legs, though. Yes, it's 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 clingy and and not runny, but it's it's got a nice cling, not, nice uh, string of pearls. Yeah, it looks it looks beautiful in that jarrito too, man. I got to be really careful at this part. One day we were doing one of these, and I tilted it a little bit too much, and I got mezcal in my uh, touchpad, and now well, it doesn't work. Yeah, oh, it doesn't work now. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> well, you know, so I got my exter external mouse. There now. you go. I was gonna say though, dude, you, you got those Obama pours, man. I, I, you know what I've discovered with the Jarrito is that I, I, I use less now. I pour less, and I still, and I'm still able to draw more from it. And I think what happens is when you know, for so long we've been using reels, or I don't know what Matt's been using before he came on board with us. Um, I think I think you were using a reel. Yeah, and with, and I, got, with, I got one right here. Yeah, and so was I. So, and with a reel, you need a, an extensive pour. Sometimes you yeah. have to go up three quarters of the way from in the bowl. Whereas a jarrito, I'm very impressed with it because I don't use as much. And yeah, you you don't run into the into the problem of you know spilling some on your computer like, like we have. You know, this is more because I've been doing taxes all day. This is cheaper than yeah. Therapy. You know, I don't blame you, pal. <laughs> I would too, because when once we get off camera, I don't even dump my samples. I, rarely, unless I'm doing so many of these at one time. Uh, but yeah, yeah, they they get they get. Uh, believe me, we we drink them afterwards on camera. <laughs> oh my! Oh wow! Right. See that now you know what that face yeah. was. Yeah. Now see, you said you were getting caramely and stuff, uh, caramel, vanilla, some wood notes on it. Maybe, maybe even a butterscotch, but they they lean toward the sweeter side. Mm hmm. And now that it's aired, air opened up for a little bit, some of that has dissipated, and I'm getting much more of the wood notes. And a little bit of ethanol. See, that's the one thing I haven't gotten in any of these was any alcohol at all. Yeah. In fact, in the center of the glass, what I was getting was, was the agave, at least in the reposado and in the blanco. In this one, the, the notes are still, to me, more more mellow, still more barrel is what I'm getting. I, I don't get any alcohol, so. And, and that's just yeah. the luck of the draw. I mean, it, it may happen. It's a very pleasant nose, but it's still very straightforward barrel. Yep. They're looking for apple in the nose again on their tasting notes. I don't know if I'm getting apple. You know, it's really interesting. The last time I got any kind of fruit of that type, a, 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 a tree fruit, was in old bottles of Chinaco when mm. when Herman Gonzalez was still was still part of the of that process, and I swear to you, one day I popped to it. Somebody had given me a had gifted me a Chinaco. It was, it was probably a reposado. It wasn't even an añejo, and and I poured some in a, in a in a reel or in a glass, and I walked away from it. And as I walked past it, I swear I got pear. Oh wow! Yeah, it felt like it smelled like pear not apple so i have i i can say truthfully that i i have sensed in 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 a tequila at one time in my life <laughs> i've had pear not apple but i'm getting much more of the of the baking spices on this one on the nose mm -hmm. um it's much more amplified and prominent it's a bit sweeter i think than the repo mm -hmm. is Well, we gotta dive in. Yeah, let's let's, let's taste some. Yeah. Mm. Oh. There's a lot going on here. Oh! Oh! Wow! Mm. Wow! You know that that finish, that fruity finish on the on the end of the palate that they talked about mm -hmm. in the reposado. 
Yeah. That really just jumps out at you in the añejo. Yeah, that's here. I got some some black pepper around the mid palate. Yeah. Um, that jumped out at me. I, I, and I know the first two, the word I used was subdued. And this is anything but. This is uh, right up in there. Yeah, yeah. It is definitely, it is singing to you. It is really coming up to sing to you. And wow, man, this is the star of the show. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever happened from, from Blanco to Añejo really improved it. So whoever's doing the barrel management there with this brand, um, wow. Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm floored. This is, this is some, you know, is it just me or was I got like, I thought on the nose, I got like a raisin or a dried fruit of some mm. sort that, you know, I don't normally get unless, uh, sometimes in the next run, yeah, you'll get like a dried cherry, mm -hmm. you know, I thought, I thought of raisins right away. Okay. I didn't get any any pear, but I did get what you got in the in the in the repo at the at the back end of the palate. There's this mm. fruitiness. Mm -hmm. uh, I I, I want to say it's the agave itself. I think the characteristic of the agave is is still there at the back end of the palate. Mm -hmm. And they do uh, they do advertise, I guess, that they're using all Highland agave. Right. which are going to have a little bit more fruitiness to them in general. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot of the aroma. The, the bouquet, the aroma was not cut. There wasn't any complexity, very little on the Blanco. There was, But once they added the barrel to it, it, it gave it a layer of, of character. And, and this Añejo has got some... This is a bold Añejo, man. It is. It is. We didn't even mention the oak. It's very oak forward to start with. We sort of jumped right to the yeah, second year. I know, I know. Yeah, oak heads will be very, ple very pleasantly surprised. Now, now we're looking at a cigar pairing tequila. We're looking at a good after dinner nightcap tequila. Mm. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pair it with a dessert because I don't think it's sweet enough. I think it's, I think it's mm -hmm. bold enough to to just stand on its own. It's almost, you know, it doesn't tell us if they're American oak whiskey barrels or bourbon barrels, but this one almost goes down like a bourbon. If it weren't for the fruitiness on the on the on the on the finish, because mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's almost dry. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and we are. I mean, we're presuming they're used barrels because of how light the reposado was. Right. Um, and that white American oak is the only information they gave us, so it could be coming from anywhere, really. Yeah. Um, as, as far as we know, uh, this distillery does not use additives. The only thing that they do on a consistent basis is they use the Mozart method. Uh, I know that, you know, at least Puerto Bello is using it and Don Pilar. I'm not sure if Dulce Vida is using it. I know Dulce Vida is, uh, at one time, it was organic. Um, and I, I'm, now, that they, now that the brand has been bought and and sold to another company. I'm not sure if it's still organic. I know it's kosher. Uh, so there's no kosher signif signification uh, on the Blanco of Puerto Bello, but that doesn't, you know, depending on what on right. what, what sect um, you could consider the Blanco kosher. Um, I like it, Matt. I think it's a- I do. I think it's a brand of promise. I think it's gonna stand yeah, up to what's give going it on. Give thumbs up. Yeah, I, can, I, can, I do, I gotta get you the, I, we're gonna come we, up we with say all, that all the time. I know. I'm gonna we're print gonna, my own. We're gonna get you a, a care package with some T-shirts and maybe and uh, and uh, uh, you know a um, this is this is actually what we use to cover the uh, this is a, a a coaster, but we're gonna have the new metal <laughs> seal on it and we'll send out some some you know some ice cream sticks. You'll have to supply your own glue or tape, but you know. Yeah, I got I a craft project for my yeah, seven-year-old. Hey, yeah, <laughs> have your son help you with that, okay? Because yeah. uh, we have no budget for any of that stuff. <laughs> uh, that's I like I like this Puerto Bello. I think I think it's going to stand up to the añejos that we have in the Absolutely. category currently. Uh, I think as far as the line goes, don't 
If you're a Blanco guy, don't be put off by, by what we've said on the Blanco. In fact, if you're watching us on YouTube or wherever, if you've had this tequila before, if you're in Florida somewhere and you can get it, um, drop us a line. Tell us what you think about Puerto Bello. Um, you know, I'd love to see it. I think it's a worthy brand. It needs to it needs to be out in New York. It needs to be out in further in, in several more states. I'm not exactly sure what what their uh, what their game plan is. It looks to me like they're they're pretty well funded. They're you know they they got a nice brochure. They got nice bottling. Good branding. They're follow them on Instagram. They have beautiful pictures on Instagram. They Probably do. a lot of these similar. Uh, here's yes. a picture of the barrels. Uh, Facebook, they're really active too. It looks like. Yeah. Um, so you know, don't be afraid to 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 try them. And what did you get a price point for this añejo? Just out of curiosity. Uh, yeah. Let me click back to it because I went off the screen. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head. It is fifty four ninety nine. So, the reposado was at what price point? Forty eight, I think. You know, this is this is a good a reputable for fifty four. Now we're That's talking. Now we're yeah. talking. Because, um, like you said, for the Blanco, where the at the price point that they were at, eh, um, and and maybe the añejo or the reposado was too much of a jump. Um, but but this this añejo, pretty solid. Now now this one, would you put in a cocktail? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it in a cocktail. Really? I would just drink it neat. I mean, I guess you could, but I I think it stands on its own okay. legs. Excellent. Yeah. Well, then there you go. That's our take yep. on Puerto Bello, the whole line. This is the Añejo. Our thanks to, uh, 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 I think it's JP Promoter for uh, having this uh, sent to us, uh, to myself and, and, and Matt. Uh, you know, if you're listening to us, uh, again, on Spotify or any, anywhere where you download your, your uh, podcast, please subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit the red button. Smash it. Smash it. Don't be afraid of commitment. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a Brand of Promise nominee. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman is... Matt Metris in Rochester, New York. Whatever you do, folks, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely.